So this is a Mustang 66 Mustang, and if you've got a horn problem, uh, it's because of uh, there are a number of possibilities. Um, this horn works, but it, I had problems with it. Uh, it worked when I got the car, and then after about two years of driving the car, it started being intermittent, you know, and, and uh, I would turn, have the wheel in one position, and it would work turn the wheel 45 degrees and it wouldn't work, turn it another 30 degrees and it would work, kind of off and on, it came intermittent, it got worse, finally at some point it just didn't work at all. And um, so I wasn't quite sure what to do. Anyway, the first step is you need to remove the horn ring. You just simply rotate it, very simple, just rotate it like I'm doing right now, it pops right off. There's a spring loaded so it'll literally pop off, just like it did. And uh, now you inspect the situation here, and as I say, uh, it's a very simple system, but it is a little confusing as to how it works. Uh, looking at the uh, interior, you've got uh, two contacts here. This is a contact here and a contact here directly to the battery, and then there's a contact up here that is connected to the top of the horn. Uh, if you go to the horns, you're working right, and you sh uh, connect uh, either one of these two contacts here to this thing right here, the horn should sound. And, and in this case, of course, since I've got the horn working, it, it works. That Now, <clears throat> these contacts then uh, basically are operated with the horn button. This this whole device here, this, this whole thing that I took off is called the horn button. And on the back of this horn button, you can see that there are uh, two contacts. There's a plate, this plate right here that I'm pointing to. At the bottom of that plate there's a contact on the right and a contact on the left. Each one of these little contacts right here is positioned when the horn button's on properly. This contact is sitting right on top of that one right there and this contact is sitting right on top of this right here. So when, and this is spring-loaded, so that it's pushed away from the from this is pushed up away from it so when you're not operating the horn these contacts are not making are not touching this plate this contact and this contact are, are, are not touching either this contact or that one and so there's no way that this contact and this thing right here or this contact and that can be electrically connected and there's no horn sound now, if that's not working, um, it, it could be that these contacts are worn and they're not making proper contact here. Uh, so one option you have is you can replace these and you can buy the, the little insulator that goes behind them that I'm pointing to right now. This little plastic insulator right here comes with it. So you get this, you get this, you get that, you get that. I think the whole thing is like five bucks. So if you're not sure, it's easy to replace them, screws and all, just very simple. You just pull it out, replace it, it takes five minutes. Might as well do that. Clean the whole thing, make sure everything's clean. Uh, the other thing you have here is this, this, uh, this, this device right here, which is the plastic insulated connector that hooks the horn ring to the steering wheel. Uh, that could be worn out. Obviously, if one of these little... Um, uh, uh, hooks that are made of plastic is broken. Uh, that was the case in my case. I, one of these was broken. I replaced this whole system and that's about five dollars. It's held on with three screws and um, so it's a good idea to maybe replace that if you think it's worn out. Uh, it doesn't cost much to replace it. Once you've done all those things and you make sure that these contacts are working and there's 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 and this plate is connected to this thing right here, uh, then you're in business, uh, connect your voltmeter to this, and then if you ground the other side of the voltmeter, uh, and that, you know, you can connect it to, uh, to just about any metal part of the car, uh, you should see 15 volts between here and ground, you should see 15 volts between here and ground. If you don't, then that means that these things are not connected <clears throat> to, the, to the wire in the back of the steering wheel and that's because uh, you've got a, a bad uh, uh, connector 
inside and you're going to have to remove the steering wheel. The other option is that these could be at 15 volts but this thing right here may not be connected uh, properly to the wire that goes to the top of the horn and that's because there's a connector on the back of the steering wheel that uh, connects to this and it, if it's not making contact well then of course uh, you won't get a closed circuit when you connect this to this and the horn won't sound. So if that's what's happening then the next thing you have to do is to remove the steering wheel. So you do that by just simply uh, removing that uh, nut, the big nut right there. So I'm just unscrewing it with a, uh, and then basically just take it off. Okay, take that nut off, get the nut off, and uh, in this case, it comes. Okay, so I was able to uh, <clears throat> to get the thing uh, off without a steering wheel puller. Um, you put a bolt through there and a bolt, turn it around. It goes on the steering wheel like this, okay, with this uh, pointed end down touching uh, uh, post uh, in front of the steering wheel and then the bolts go into those holes right there they go through one bolt goes uh, through uh, this and the other bolt through that uh, you know some steering wheels have three bolts so this this steering wheel puller is kind of a universal one that you can use with the Mustang or other things anyway ultimately you, 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 you basically uh, use this to pull the steering wheel uh, by, by rotating that center shaft downward so that it pushes against the steering wheel column and lifts that plate that I'm holding with my hand upward and pulls the steering wheel off. Contacts that I pointed out on the top of the steering wheel, okay, the, there are the two contacts that are 15 volts, this one right here and that one right there, and there's the contact that goes to the top of the horn right here, okay. If you turn this thing over, you'll find two rings. Um, <clears throat> there's a center ring annulus right around here that I'm rubbing my hand across, finger across and there's an outer one right out here that I'm rubbing my finger across. This center one right here is the one that uh, is connected to the uh, 15 volt contacts on the other side of the steering wheel and this outer ring is what's connected to that single um, uh, top contact at the top of the steering wheel that connects to the horn. Rings are set up, the, these rings are, are so that when you turn the steering wheel in any position uh, the, this, the, the fixed contacts attached to the steering column will make contact to these things and the way that works is you look at the steering column here and you'll see two uh, stalks coming up, one here, one here, and this one is carrying a 15 volt signal from the battery. This one is connected to the top of the horn, and basically when you connect this to that, the horn should sound. And so if those are properly connected and you short them together, the horn should sound. All right. If the horn doesn't sound when you connect these two things together, it means that the wiring from either this one to the battery or this one to the horn is faulty. To see if you've got continuity between here and the battery, or continuity between here and the top of the horn, you can do that with a continuity tester uh, and just check it. If it's not connected, uh, you know you'll have to find out where the break is uh, and fix that. If it is connected, then you know that. Uh, you've got continuity and problem is that uh, maybe the connections to the uh, soldering joints are bad or something like that. But anyway, you get these things properly working and they, when shorted together, uh, sound the horn, then your problem is that one of these contacts, or both, is not making contact to the outer ring or the inner ring on this horn assembly as the, horn, as the steering wheel is being turned. Now, since I had an intermittent problem, and in various positions the horn would sound, in various positions it wouldn't. I and I and and, the, and these two contacts were working. You know, if I connected these two together, I'd get a horn to sound. Well, it was obvious 
that I had a problem with connection between these rings and these things right here and that turned out to just be a question of where. Uh, after 47 years of turning the steering wheel, even if you never use the horn, these brushes will wear down and eventually the metal will literally wear down to the point where it'll make intermittent contact with these uh, rings. Now then you go to the catalog and find a replacement for this assembly and it turns out they don't sell it so now you're kind of stuck you can't uh, replace these this this assembly so now you have to just basically fix the brushes so my simple solution to that was just to take a little piece of copper wire and wrap it around the stock of this brush and then pull the wire up to the top of it right here and if you look closely you can see there's wire that I basically just braided over the top of that metal contact I did that on both of these, this one and this one. So there's little wires sticking up there, copper wire. And then I rubber band, and then I used rubber bands to connect the wire to the stock. I didn't solder them on because uh, once you solder them on, you've made a permanent uh, attachment. If these wires ever need to be replaced, you're going to have a problem of unsoldering them, a big mess. Uh, it's hard to do that. Just just use rubber bands. There's no heat here there's no reason for anything to heat up or and then uh, and I cleaned everything I used some electrical cleaner to clean this whole area that's why it's so clean now it was a filthy mess when I took it apart clean all this you know clean those rings so that they make good contact all around and you're all set and then just put the steering wheel back on after you've checked that and make sure it works